Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar review. This one is going to be for the Rise of Kyoshi audiobook. So, um, in this video I'm not really going to be focusing much on, I suppose, the story of Rise of Kyoshi. This is more of a review of the Rise of Kyoshi in the audiobook format. Uh, I suppose at the end I'll briefly give some kind of extra thoughts having, you know, listened to the book again. Um, but the main thing here is audiobook. We're focusing on that. So first of all, you may be wondering, wait, I thought the release of the audiobook wasn't until July 21st, 2020. That's what Audible says right now. Um, you know, it's an Audible exclusive, so how do you have the audiobook? How have you listened to it? Well, here's the thing that's happened. Uh, Greg from the podcast, of course, um, was the one who actually found this. And Basically, he was just searching around for stuff about the audiobook and came across this website called urbanaudiobooks.com. And if you go to that website, it looks basically just like a kind of color change style website, like a clone basically of the Blackstone Library website, who are the uh, publisher of the audiobook. And obviously they have it, they have it available. You can buy the CD there, the MP3 CD, you can buy it digitally, but also they have it to rent. And both of those things are like available to buy right now. They still have the old release date of May 5th. So I suppose theoretically this has actually been up on this website for like since May the 5th. I'm not actually sure about that because obviously, you know, uh, I only found out about it like what, not yesterday, but the day before, um, through Greg emailing me about it. So um, I don't know if I can say that for sure, but either way, it's out like more than a month before it's meant to be released. So, and if I can confirm it, like I'll just show you it in the app. Um, and then I'll explain, I suppose, a little bit about how it works. As you can see here, um, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, The Rise of Kyoshi, track two. Uh, if I just play a little bit of this. The test. This is the first chapter. Yokoya Port was a town easy to overlook. Situated on the edge of Whale Tail Strait, it could have been a major restocking point for ships leaving one of the many harbors that supplied Omashu. But the strong, reliable, prevailing winds made it too easy and cost-effective for southbound merchants to cruise right past it and reach Shimsom Big Island in a straight shot. Jinju wondered if the locals knew or cared that ships laden with riches sailed tantalizingly close by. So, yeah, you can see I have that. The preview for the audiobook was cha from Chapter 8. That was ch Chapter 1. And you can see I have it. And, okay, so the way this works is that if you sign up for an account on Urban Audiobooks, you can obviously add either the digital copy or the digital rent to your basket. And then you can check out on the website or you can do it via the app. There's just an app that's called Urban Audiobooks. That's the way I did it. I'm from Ireland. I found it much easier to do here. Uh, the website seems to very much want you to be from America. And I don't think you can even check out on the website if you're not from America. It has like an our authorization thing. So if you're outside of America, the app is probably the best way to go about getting this. Uh, the way it works is very similar to Audible. You can buy it outright for like, what, $22, $23, which I think is the same price on Audible. Or you can rent it for, uh, for me in euros, it was uh, $7.99 to rent it for a month. Uh, which works out well for me. That means I can cancel the pre-order in Audible, use that credit for a different audiobook, and I can just get the uh, CD when it comes out. Um, so just be aware of that. I'll have a link in the description to Urban Audiobooks if you want to check it out yourself. I just thought I needed to explain that because it was a kind of confusing thing for me because, yeah, if you go on Audible, it says only on Audible and it's not even out yet. And then we've had those multiple delays for it on Audible and there's still no sign of it. As I showed you just there, it doesn't even have the cover for the audiobook, which is apparently what was holding up the whole process. So I don't know if just they didn't update their new urban audiobook website or whatever, but they did update Audible and something happened there. But either way, the full audiobook is there. I've listened to it. It's 14 and a half hours. It's the full book for sure. It's exactly the thing they are selling on Audible. It is just not out on Audible. At this point, my understanding of it probably is that 
they've just for marketing reasons decided to switch the release date of the audiobook to the same day as the Shadow of Kyoshi comes out. So they have a whole like Kyoshi day basically of new way to listen to the first book, first time to read the second book type thing. Um, so uh, I think that's what they're going for. So, you know, if you don't want to mess around with this new website, um, you know, obviously just wait for it to be on Audible. Uh, but, or there's the CD, of course, that is available, also coming out on uh, July 21st. I have that ordered, so as soon as that comes in, I will do a video showing off, you know, just like the packaging for the CD and what exactly it is and so on. Because uh, I know some people will want like a some sort of physical version of this book because it's got a, such an um, important piece of uh, Avatar content, story content. So, um, with that explanation out of the way, how is the audiobook? What was it like to listen to an Avatar novel being sort of read to me? It was, to me, a really, really good experience. I really liked this audiobook. Uh, Nancy Wu is the uh, narrator for the full thing. So it's just one narrator. There's no music and there is no sound effects like some of the bigger, you know, Star Wars audiobooks. So don't go in like expecting to hear all the different avatar music and sound effects. It is just a sort of standard reading, but it is very well done. She, do she does her best to do like different voices for the characters without, I think, going like over the top um, in that she doesn't like overly do kind of weird voices for like the guy characters and so on she just has sort of subtle variations of her kind of normal speaking voice for it and then some of them are is actually very good voice acting for some of the like minor characters as well like um auntie mui from like earlier on in the book she actually does quite a unique voice for her but then I, I think it's clear enough that like, okay, there's a slight difference in tone between the way she does the Rangi lines versus the way she does the Kyoshi lines. And then similarly, the difference between, say, Jonju and uh, Kelsong. They're also differently done. Um, the pronunciation, I suppose, is probably going to be a big talking point for a lot of people in terms of like, okay, how, we, how do you actually pronounce these character names? And obviously from the preview, we actually got a lot of them. There's a lot of like, oh, it's Jonju instead of John Zhu, which is the way it, you know, you'd think to say it just, but from how it's spelled, it's Kel Song instead of Kel Sang, again, compared to how it's spelled. Uh, it's Peng Peng instead of Peng Peng. And then the big one that people have been waiting for, Tiguai the Immortal is his name that is used throughout this book. How do you actually say the, the alternate name? Uh, is it Lao Ji or what? Uh, the way it is said every single time in this book is Lao Ge. That's just the way it is. It, it, it feels kind of weird to say it in that like it's more of a kind of like grunt in a way than that like, feels like you're actually saying something, but it's Lao Ge, which I guess makes sense and all the different characters, regardless of who says his name, says it that way. Uh, outside of that, I don't think there's any particularly different things with the pronunciation. The one thing that made me kind of go like, huh, what, what's going on here? That like, this isn't the part of the book I remember, was towards the end of the book, um, John Zhu is in like a room with a lot of the other sort of uh, sages and important people from the Earth Kingdom, and he notes that there is uh, one of the sages from the Zhang tribe, and she pronounces it like Zhang. Now, this seems to just be in general the way she goes about pronouncing like any name that ends with an A-N-G which is obviously going to be a little bit weird because like the main character in all of Avatar, Ang, is pronounced Ang and not Ong. So why is it Kel Song and not Kel Sang? Um, and it's the same with that. In the episode The Great Divide, it is pronounced Zhang, not Zhang. So, you know, it, it may be just the narrator going for, you know, everything Eastern style pronunciation. Um, whereas I suppose Avatar... In the show, they always tend to go for like, you know, I suppose the Western way you would say those words. It, it's, it's, it's not too much of a problem or anything like that. It's just when you finally hear her sort of say something that is said in the shows that we already heard before differently, it kind of makes you maybe question like, oh, like, are we meant to maybe view the others as differently? The way I view it is just that like, no one should get upset if anyone pronounces the characters' names wrong here. If you say Kel Sang or Kel Song, it doesn't matter. If you say Rangi or Rongi, it doesn't matter. And um, if you say John Zhu or John Ju, 
again, it, it doesn't matter that much. Um, that's at least my take on it at this point of like, you can choose to treat what is said in the audiobook as being the like proper official pronunciation, um, or you can just be like, this is the way I read it and it fits more with the show's usual pronunciation of these type of things. Everything else, I think, pretty much reads as you would expect it. Uh, with regards to her style as she goes through it, um, one of the things that I thought was actually really good across the entire book was that she definitely does a good job at sort of capturing the emotion of each scene that we're in. Um, I think you can sort of tell that she maybe like read ahead so she knew what the emotion for the whole scene was so that when she actually did the recording she got every single emotional beat she was meant to. Uh, so when there's a really tense scene like some of the Kyoshi John Zhu scene scenes you can tell that there's a there's an anger there's an issue between the two characters in some of the more you know intense emotional bordering on romantic scenes between Kyoshi and Rangi you can tell there that there's a lot of like t romantic tension between the characters. Uh, there's like a frustration between like the way they're acting, but there's also that you know uh, romantic stuff kind of building up as well. So I think a lot of fans of the Kyoshi Rangi ship are actually really, really going to like the way those scenes are performed here. Um, so I think that's definitely something to praise it for. Um, and yeah, it looks like when there's action, you know, there's just, she's reading just that, you know, that little bit, you know, quicker to keep it going along. I wouldn't say it's like anything noticeable, but like, she just, when it's meant to be, you know, quick through the action, she's like, you know, but when, you know, you know, when it's descriptive, you know, she, she takes her time a little bit, you know, faster reading along when there's action, just what you'd expect, basically, typically. Um, so, so in that sense, like, I had like no real issue whatsoever with the audiobook. Um, I've listened to a lot of audiobooks before and this one is very, very good. Is it the best audiobook I've ever read? No, that probably would have to go to some of the more um, super produced Star Wars audiobooks that have music, sound effects and stuff like that. Um, but this didn't seem like some like low quality effort or anything like that. This was very, very good. And I don't think many people are going to have too much of a problem with it. Um, you know, the, we got one brief clip. Uh, I don't know, I saw some people maybe, you know, thinking like, oh, am I gonna like Nancy Wu's uh, style of narration? To me, it's one of those things like you very quickly adapt to it. When you actually just sit down for like an hour or two to listen to a chunk of it, um, it's perfectly fine. You know, after five, ten minutes, you're right in the book uh, because it's being read to you, so it's a, you can do other stuff while you're doing it. I read a lot of, I listened to a lot of this book while playing Rocket League for some uh, pretty big play sessions, and it was just a really, really good experience. Uh, finally, I suppose, just getting to do that because like typically you know if I ever go back to look at the Kyoshi book you know have to take the book out you know find the part that I'm looking for and just do that and um, whereas here it's like ah track this turn it on and I can do something else as well while I'm waiting for the moment I'm, I'm waiting for it to come up and it's just a perfect way of like if I ever want to refresh myself on the Rise of Kyoshi novel I can now just turn this on when I'm doing something else it's really really good to have because I know a lot of people have said to me that like, like I haven't you know, gone gotten to reading the book yet because I don't tend to read a lot uh, because they prefer to do it listen to it while doing something else it's going to be I think perfect for them you know uh, I, I, I'm interested to see how other people feel about it uh, me and Greg discussed it a little bit on the podcast yesterday and he seems to really like it as well so it's two for two from the people you know I I've have experience uh, with. Uh, we'll see how other people uh, react to it once it's properly out there. But for what I saw from like the preview, I think people do tend to like the narration. So you know, it'll be I suppose a little maybe hit and miss depending on that. Some people may like you know different types of narrators, but I think it's very good. Um, but yeah, um, how was the experience of just you know? experiencing the book again through audio. Did I notice anything different or anything like that? I'd say to me the main difference here, like I, I had probably read the book about three times. Once ahead of my initial reviews, um, 
and then like twi this, a second sort of time going more quickly through it, just hitting on the main beat. So I had the story down, again ahead of I think like my spoiler review. And then the third time was going through it, you know, in full across the um, chapter analysis videos that I did. I'll link them in the description if you want to uh, listen to them. If, you, if you're recently getting into the Rise of Kyoshi book and you want some analysis, I have a video on every single chapter if you want analysis from each chapter. Um, so, you know, I have those kind of three, you know, kind of readings of the book, plus, you know, referring to it every so often in the, inter in the intervening time. But, like, I would definitely say, going through it for all of those... Oh, and, and, and I've read some of it as well for the podcast. So I've, I've probably gone through it, like, read it properly three times, and then, like, once or twice just kind of flicking through it type thing. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the book. I still, listening to the audiobook, noticed a few extra little bits. Some of the just more sort of background narration stuff stood out to me a little bit more. Sort of the stuff that when you're reading, you just sort of glance past because you want to get to sort of the good stuff. I think everyone has that tendency when they read to just kind of be like, okay, here's the sort of big description stuff. Okay, you know, description, description, go through it. It's not that you're skipping it as such. It's just you're not focusing as much on it. That's the, the thing about reading is like you have to be like laser focused to get everything out of it. But here you're able to get like every single word because it's being read it's being read by someone who's you know getting the the intent across very well with the tone and emotion of the scenes as well so um that was really good to see and um, it was just little things of like um there was one section where like i didn't i can't believe i like potentially missed this in some of my previous readings of just like you know i think it was said that like you know two of yang chen's companions like laid down their life for her um, trying to protect her uh, when when they were talking about the idea of the avatar's companions at one point in the book and that like that's like a, a kind of big moment because Yang Chen's you know most of her life was said to sort of be perfect but here's like an incident where like two of her sort of companions or I suppose people who trained her you know sacrificed themselves for her like that that was just a, a kind of cool um thing to read um so like you definitely get a little bit more from this, especially if you can really sort of um, sit down and focus on like just listening to the audiobook um, and aren't distracted by anything. You'll get a lot out of this. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I don't think there's a ton more to say. Like, The Rise of Kyoshi to me still stands out as being one of the best pieces of Avatar kind of story content that we've ever got. Um, it, to me, like, after the two shows, I think it's like right up there you know i think like the search the promise the rift the first three comics are all very very good and um, and the same definitely applies for this this is a really really good first novel telling you this full backstory on kiyoshi Jonju as the the main sort of uh, kind of character like uh, enemy in a way it feels like a spoiler saying that but it's you know the book's been out a year i don't i don't really mind mentioning it too much at this point um He's fantastic, like, you know, he already stood out a lot to me in my initial readings, but having it read, like, he stands out even more for just his plotting and, like, how well constructed that character is, and um, it's, it's just so well done with the details about the developing the Dao Fei as, like, the big world-building aspect to this, the little details you get about, like, oh, Karuk in the past, Yang Chen, um you know, Kyoshi's parents and stuff like that. It's all those cool reveals just hit that little bit harder because it's sort of being read out to you. Um, so, you know, if, if you like audiobooks, you should definitely get this. Now, whether or not you want to jump straight away onto getting it right now from Urban Audiobooks or just committing to like, okay, I know it's on Audible, I'll just get it on Audible. That's entirely up to you. You want to wait for the CD, that's fine. Like I said, I, I have the CD on order, and when it arrives, I will show off that to show you physically, I suppose, what it actually looks like, if, you, if there's any kind of extras type stuff with it. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much, I think, everything I want to say on the audiobook. Um, in the comments, let me know if you have any questions about this, the audiobook, or anything like that. Uh, but if you've read it via the audiobook already, let me know what your thoughts were on it as well. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.